Pokemon Go. Maybe you've heard of it? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 tips for playing Pokemon Go. I am the greatest! You're the worst! You have no idea what you're doing! It'll be a long time till you're a Pokemon master, like a million years! For this list, we're taking a look at the most useful pointers that'll help Pokemon Go players be the very best and catch them all. I wanna be the very best, like no one ever was. Number 10, stay aware of the real world. As quite possibly the most addictive gaming app of all time, it's easy to lose oneself in the world of Pokemon Go. However, the game's augmented reality mustn't distract players from actual reality. Otherwise, you could walk off a cliff or crash your car into a tree. In fact, while we're at it, please don't play while driving at all. We don't care if Pikachu is in the middle of the highway. Causing a pileup isn't worth it. The driver of the RAV4 told investigators that he was looking down, playing the Pokemon Go game when he struck the patrol car. Remember to be especially cautious of your surroundings when you're hunting at night. One minute you could be catching a Rattata, or, you know, ignoring the 500th one that you've seen, and the next you could be getting robbed, fall into a pond, or nailed by a cyclist. Seriously, don't stop to catch a Pokemon while you're on a bike path. Holy shit, I didn't know that was water. Number nine, search for landmark Pokestops. So this is what I'm activating right now, as you can see. It gives me Pokeballs, three of them, and a potion. While Pokemon Go has caused some people to lose touch with reality, the game has also miraculously convinced people to uh, go outside. Sunscreen? Check. In addition to hunting Pokemon, players must uncover Poke Stops in order to gain potions, Pokeballs, and eggs. These blue icons can be found all over the place, although parks in particular are known for having multiple hotspots. Poke Stops are often linked to local landmarks, which typically supply better in-game items. For 30 minutes while you're walking around or even just standing still, Pokemon will come to you, so you can just catch anybody. If a special event or promotion is happening at any of these locations, rare Pokemon could potentially be lured out to play. These areas can get especially crowded too, so be sure to play nice and uh, remember point 10. Three, there we go, we got him. Is there, is there like an orange team I didn't know about? <laughs> Number eight, avoid unnecessary data usage. A lot of people are concerned about how much data um, this game uses. Despite being free to play, this game can cost you a bundle and not only through in-app purchases. If your phone bill recently went through the roof, it's possibly because Pokemon Go is consuming a lot more than just your free time. So it's about 10 megabytes per hour, okay? That's how much Pokemon Go uses up your data. If you don't have unlimited data and need to watch that limit, there are things you can do. For example, always switch back to your personal Wi-Fi network as soon as you get home, or stick to areas that provide free Wi-Fi, like restaurants. If you go to school and get Wi-Fi on campus, that's a great way to stay mobile and cover a large area without using your own data. Setting a mobile data limit certainly doesn't hurt either. Above all else though, try to play the game in moderation, people. Number seven, keep the app open to hatch eggs. As mentioned before, eggs are among the several items available at Pokestops. Once the player puts an egg in an incubator, they'll need to walk 2, 5, or 10 kilometers to hatch it. Don't say it! Don't you say it! Left. Come on! Keep in mind, however, that there is a speed limit. The game won't register your distance if you travel over 20 miles per hour. In other words, you can't just get in the car and drive around. To speed up the hatching process, it's best to keep the app open when you're walking anywhere. Even if you're getting up to go to the bathroom, every step makes a bit of a difference. Number six, poach a neutral gym. Anyway, I heard there's a gym close by. Do you all know if that's true? A gym? When you reach level five and have joined Team Valor, Team Mystic, or Team Instinct, pff, why would you? You're probably eager to take down a rival gym. Come on, side, I can do this. The Pidgeot's almost done. Assuming your Pokemon aren't ready for the big league, there is a way to claim a gym without even battling. When a gym's prestige points drop to absolute zero, it will become a neutral white area. If you're quick enough, you can poach the gym for your team and add your strongest Pokemon. So this is Pewter Gym? All right then. Hello! While this might be easier than leveling up and battling, some trainers have argued that sniping neutral gyms isn't fair. At San Diego Comic Con 2016, the Antic CEO, John Hank, promised to work towards ending gym poaching. So if you want to do this, don't get too used to it. To compete in the regional championships, you need to beat gym trainers from different towns and get their badges as proof. 
Number five, transfer your Pokemon. If you already have one Pidgey, you'll still want to capture several more. Why? Because you can transfer extra Pokemon to Professor Willow in exchange for candy. Now how do you actually transfer your Pokemon? Click on them and go to the very bottom over here it says transfer. Each Pokemon has their own specific candy, which goes towards leveling up and evolution. So, in a nutshell, the more Pokemon you catch, the more you can transfer. The more Pokemon you transfer, the more candy you'll get. The more candy you get, the closer your Pokemon comes to evolving. There he is in all of his glory. Catching Zubat after Zubat might sound like tedious work, but it'll pay off once you get that Golbat. Just try not to think about what happens to your transferred Pokemon, or what that candy is made out of. Wow, this took a dark turn. And there we go, it says uh, transfer success, you got a uh, coin. Number four, look out for size and color of target circles. Caterpie, you're mine! The catching system in Pokemon Go may seem elementary compared to the other games in the franchise, but there's actually a fair deal of strategy involved. When you touch a Pokeball, a color-coded circle will appear around the Pokemon you're looking at. Green means it's easy to catch, yellow means it's harder to catch, and red means it's time to break out a Master Ball. <laughs> to increase your odds of capturing a Pokemon, you'll want to wait for the circle to shrink down. The smaller the ring is, the more likely the Pokemon will remain in the Pokeball. And trust us, nothing is more frustrating than wasting precious Pokeballs. Speaking of which... Come on, come on. No! Oh my gosh! Okay, it hit. We're good, we're good. We're good. I thought I'd missed. <laughs> Number three, throwing Pokeballs. <laughs> Even if you've just encountered a low-level Pokemon, there's still an art to capturing it. Perhaps the most challenging part of the game is learning how to throw Pokeballs the right way. For starters, we'd suggest flicking the Pokeball towards the middle of the screen to ensure that you'll hit your target. Oh, yo, I'm terrible at this, man. Look at that Pokeball! With that said, Pokemon don't always stand still. They can dodge throws, making timing a crucial factor. So, wait for a Pokemon to perform a dodge move and then swiftly toss your Pokeball. Learning how to throw a spin ball can additionally earn a trainer more experience points. You see, there's a lot more to this game than simply waving your finger. Come on, Charmander! Welcome to the group! Char! Char! Number two, turn off AR while catching Pokemon. Turning augmented reality off will improve how efficiently you catch Pokemon. The same Pokemon are always placed in the same location. Utilizing your mobile device's camera and GPS, this augmented reality game makes it seem as if Pokemon have really taken over our world. This has made leeway for countless awesome photos, but when it comes to actually capturing a lot of Pokemon, it's best to turn off the game's AR feature. This will position the Pokemon right in the center of your screen, and you don't have to point at anything, making it much easier to catch. So turn off your augmented reality. It will save your battery and your Pokeballs. Plus, augmented reality, or AR, drains your battery so much faster. Speaking of which, pick yourself up a portable phone charger if you're going on a long hunt. After all, getting stranded in the middle of nowhere with a dead phone is a recipe for trouble. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Can you tell me which way do I go? That way! They're coming back! Run! Now a lot of people are like, hey, you know, this is a pay-to-win app. Well, actually, when you run out of Pokeballs, you, you, you don't really actually run out of Pokeballs if you drive around. Number one, you can get Pikachu as your starter Pokemon. But believe me, I'm ready for a Pokemon! If you grew up playing Pokemon Red and Blue, you're probably accustomed to starting with Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle. If you want to follow in the footsteps of Ash Ketchum, however, a la Pokemon Yellow, your heart is likely set on starting with good old Pikachu. In that case, as soon as you start the game for the first time, run away from the three starters that show up at the beginning of the game. Although these Pokemon will follow you for a while, a certain electric mouse is bound to eventually pop up. Pikachu. It's too bad this trick wasn't public knowledge when Pokemon Go was initially launched. Nevertheless, at least you future trainers can begin their Pokemon journey by saying, Pikachu, I choose you. Pikachu! Pikachu! 
So, do you agree with our tips? What other tips would you give to would-be trainers? To catch them is my real test. To train them is my cause. Be sure to keep your head up when you're out there. And for more great top 10s and great content published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.